Originally built for recreation and the raising of livestock, the colony has turned into a desert as of late, resulting in it being abandoned by its population. Assigned to mop up duty, the White Base enters the debris filled Texas zone on a search for any enemy vessels that might have escaped the Battle of Solomon. Waiting for them is Captain McCuve, the wily commander who'd given them such a difficult time while they were on Earth. When you spot the Gundam, lure it toward Texas. That will make it easier for me in the Guyan. Yes, sir. That's our intention. I love how they describe McCuve as the wily commander. Oh, anyways, we welcome back to the next the episode. Fleet. Launch immediately. I was trying to relax after almost losing my life. You know, the protagonists are bitching an awful lot here. I'm doing all the fucking work. Come on. I actually kind of like that picture that they show of the, of the guy in. Looks pretty bitching then. I still don't see how a melee-only unit in space is a great idea, but then again, maybe I'm just not familiar enough with space warfare tactics in that uh, era of time. Anyways, this is actually the second second time I've had to record this section of video. Um, the first time I did, got to the end of the whole thing, turned off the capture device, tried playing the original file for it only to realize that it had stopped recording at a minute and like three seconds or so, so I basically had wasted half an hour. Love it when that happens, don't you guys? So this stage is kind of straightforward at first. You're not going to see a whole lot in terms of variety. It's just shoot them up, take out the doms and the ships, try to get as many points as possible. Now, you're going to see me play really reckless more so than usual because I was absolutely pissed I'm going in to get back that I had to record all this again because not only did I have to record this again, I actually had to play all of the original three stages over again in order to get back to this point because you can't stage select at this point in the game. One of our ships so it was a really big pain in the ass. Heading this way. Damn. There. Of course, I'm trying to dissect the Musai as best as possible in order to add up those points. Can't get away. I'm starting to get better with using it, especially too. The ship's controls. We're going Always used down. to forget it was there, but it comes in handy when you're taking out ships, especially if you don't want them to get out of range too quick. So this is a gun. All right. And Captain Joe Cool here comes out of nowhere. There. Really not too big of a pain in the ass, so if you want to try and focus on cleaning up the rest of the DOMs for points, go for it. All they can really do is melee. The missiles that come out of the guy in the shield are a nuisance at best. You can deploy the mines to be careful of those. They're really hard to spot in space, more so than when you actually get inside the college. You can kind of see them floating around there. Those DOMs are just the bane of my existence. Zaku 2s are nothing. Their weapon is kind of That's pathetic against the uh, Gundam's armor. You just keep meleeing the hell out of the guy, and it, it really isn't that tough of a fight for the beginning portions. And of course, it's just scripted for a large uh, segment of it. The Gundam, I've been waiting for. All right, next section of the level here. Now, the only thing you can really target is Makuve or the little mine rocks there. You can easily tell that they're mines because of those red little spines attached to them. You can get points for blowing them up. However, they take a hell of a beating before they'll actually blow up. So I just generally try and focus on Makuve, unless my targeting computer is just being an absolute pain in the ass and not targeting Makuve. I'm going in to get back up. You're done. Matter of fact, through this playthrough run, I actually noticed that this becomes more of an issue later on down the line. Matter of fact, in this level again, my targeting problem will come up again. Just because there's too much on screen and the, the way that it cycles through enemies, just, it doesn't make any sense. They like to try proximity and then it likes to go from order of greatest to least and I don't know what the hell is thinking. It looks like he's firing racket balls out of his shield. I just noticed that. The Elmuth still hasn't arrived at Texas Colony yet. Well, we can be thankful my Gelgoog is here. My, what a pretty pink color. 
It's Makuve. Still, I can't let an ally fight alone. This flight could double as a field test while I go greet Makuve. See, unlike uh, Shar, I would have just gone to hell with it. It's Makuve, after all. Fuck it. Lost Odessa. You, you cowards! Too bad. That's what happens when you always expect your enemies to fight fairly. Now, this section here is not as difficult as the game would make it out to be. Like, there's a shit ton of these mines. They do hurt, but they're really easy to avoid. Matter of fact, you can fly out of the area that they're spammed in. So why bother even staying up there if you feel uncomfortable with it? But even if you choose to fight within the minefield itself, Makube makes it really easy for you to just come up to him and just show him who's boss. That's going to cost you. That's going to cost you. Yeah, see there? Just a small amount of, little, of health for it. So it's a, it's a worthy little thing. But Jed, to add a little bit of a complication to the battle, Char breaks Red in. Mobile suit. It must be Char. Char, fall back. Your present mission has nothing to do with fighting the Gundam. I'm not going to stand now, idly by while in these out. rail shooting sections right here. I don't even bother trying to shoot at them. If you can even hit them, I'd be amazed most of the time. And you're not going to do a whole lot of a lot of damage because I'm pretty sure they don't have a health bar technically until you get to the uh, battle sphere portion. <clears throat> Shar's going to screw off to whatever corner of the map he likes to be in for a while. So just focus on Makuve in the meantime. He literally just sits there and takes these shots like he just likes it. Eventually, you're going to start seeing uh, beam fire and spam come from Shar. That's when I would focus in on him. He is extremely easy to take out, but he becomes a pain in the ass if you're trying to just focus on Makuve. His mobile suit has no plot armor whatsoever, so take him out. I mean, just absolutely wreck your shit. Go fuck off here in a few moments, and then you can just completely focus on Makuve's dumbass. And again, you're going to get to a point where you can't take the guy in his health down. It's annoying as hell. Matter of fact, I just start hitting him eventually, and I'm not even realizing that his health bar is going Deliver that antique vase to Lady Cassilia. It's extremely valuable. Take your sweet time trying to blow up there, Makuve. Matter of fact, I will give him some kudos. His helmet, for actually piloting a mobile suit, isn't retardedly large. It doesn't have spikes that'll get caught on shit everywhere. It you? looks actually functional. Anyways, I unlocked a little We're secret rendezvous here. We're fire with the enemy fleet. Commandant Wakain has come to support us. Oh, don't Wakain. So it's the white base. You have gotten strong. I do like those Magellan-class ships. They're nice to look at. Much better looking than the Solomon standards. Fire! Lay down a barrage! If you do manage to unlock the second stage, it's a great point to actually try and get as many points as you can, because there's much, uh, many more ships to shoot at. Ah! White base, it's all up to you. Wow, you lasted a hell of Commandant a long time McCain. there, Commandant. Damn all right, it. fuck it all up. Just destroy everything. I'd recommend mobile, or immobilizing the ships so they're not really going anywhere. Although I don't think they actually tried to escape the combat zone. Again, like I said, I was really pissed off about having to do this mission twice. So I end up just destroying them, not even trying to take them apart. For the most part, the mobile enemies you're going to have to fight are just populated doms, or with doms, so it's not too bad. Besides, the segment of the level actually can't advance until you take out the ships, remember the series. So you can just take out these doms as long as they keep spawning, really. Blast them! Fire the missiles! Alright, here we go. Second phase. Also introducing another character pilot here. because I heard there was fighting. A red mobile suit? But it doesn't seem like Shark. But it's not. It's Johnny motherfucking Riding. The Crimson Lightning. 
you'd better remember that. Yeah, he gets a little temperamental if you forget that whole thing. I don't know why, but it probably has to do with the semblance of his name, but he always reminds me of Raiden from Metal Gear Solid 2. Just kind of this whiny little shit. But he's, he's a decent guy. I actually like his background story for a lot of things. And his mobile suits are kind of cool looking, the variations, just making him a little bit different from Char. His mobile suit is actually the Zaku, uh, Zaku 2 Fast type, or uh, high mobility type, which is a Johnny Wright custom. It has a couple of neat little features, not to mention that spiked pauldron along with the flared out uh, booster covers on the legs. He's, he's an absolute pain in the ass to fight, this, especially because you have so much on screen. The first time I recorded this, I nearly died. Uh, matter of fact, I think I had no shield, just a sliver of health, because I had left one of the Musai alive, who was just constantly launching missiles at me, and I kept targeting the missiles because I couldn't lock out of it. Now, you can go ahead and target Johnny. I'm pretty sure that even if he runs off, you're okay. You can take out the rest of these units at your leisure, but... Uh, no, maybe not. Maybe the time does go for it. As Sayla searches for Amaro within the colony, she encounters Shar for the third time. War doesn't suit you. I want you off that Trojan horse. Caspal! Caspal! Please! Come back! Caspal and Artesia. Their encounter makes them realize how far apart they've grown from each other. Sela is horrified by Shar's ambitions to pursue their father's ideals and establish a world of new types. Concerned for her safety, Shar sends a trunk of gold bars to help her leave the military behind. But Sela makes the decision to stay and fight in order to stop her brother. And I got an S rank. All right. I managed to do that the first time as well, but because there's no recording of it, I was really hoping to get an S rank again. That's another good point to bring up, is that even if you get an S rank on one playthrough, if you get a C rank on that same mission out of the next playthrough, you don't have to worry about it overriding your S rank. The highest rank that you get for a mission is what counts. Space Fortress Solomon is undergoing repairs in order to serve as a base for the Federation forces. But a series of strange incidents has the occupation forces worried. One after another, Federation warships are being destroyed by what can only be described as an invisible enemy. Meanwhile, Admiral Giran Zabi, Supreme Commander of the Principality of Zeon, is assigning Lieutenant Shalia Bull to serve under his sister, Cassilia Zabi. Recently arrived from Jupiter, the Lieutenant is rumored to be a new type. Have I ever mentioned that nothing good comes out of Jupiter? Are they helpless? Do they expect us to do everything for them? We've just received orders from Solomon Headquarters to intercept that unidentified unit. I'll make up the time I lost. So, out of curiosity, with a base the size of Solomon, even if you did manage to defeat the defending forces, it, being so large, I, as an occupying force, I would be too worried about saboteurs coming from inside the base. There's got to be a shit ton of hiding spots. Hell, you could fly a mobile suit around half of it before you were spotted in all likelihood, depending on the Minofsky particle density. The only thing that can really spot you is by visual Amuro, cue. let's do it. That being said, I wouldn't have probably landed on Solomon until it had a thorough spook check on it. Unidentified enemy. It'll be a Zaku or a Dawn. Whatever it is, it has to be stopped. This is actually kind of a short little mission here. For the most part, you're going to be fighting Doms around the large section of it, but uh, then you're going to see the uh, invisible enemy. There! For the most part, they're just going to try and kill off White Base. Just defend it. It's simple. Not too bad. And since they're Zaku 2s, they really don't have a whole much of a chance to actually take White Base out. But do avoid hitting it yourself, because you will do quite a bit of damage to it compared to the enemy. Eventually, they're out. Ah, there we go. Eventually, they're going to start throwing Rick Doms at you. But again, no problems if you just keep an eye out where you shoot. I actually hit the White Base quite a few times during this playthrough. There! I'm so used to when I go in for melee combat that uh, the Federation of Zeon Gun versus Zeta Gun, where if you hit them about uh, two or three times, they'll go out of lock and you just have invincibility frames. This barrage is too but for the most part, as long as you have them locked on, have at it. This will keep up for a little while, so just spam the hell out of that attack and use it to 
$1,500, man. There! I'm gonna try and lighten this, or not lighten, but brighten the video up a little bit. After watching the uh, way YouTube actually handled the video when I uploaded the first one, it seems a bit darker than what the actual video itself. So I may go ahead and try to either re, re upload the first one or see if I can work with YouTube's enhancements to actually there. get the uh, brightness up a little bit. Because there were sections that were difficult to see, even on HD. Oh, that's another thing. Don't target the white base. You can, I don't know why you can, but you can accidentally target it. Where is he firing from? Lay down a barrage. It's coming, Lieutenant. I see it. I'm going for it. Have I ever mentioned that the mobile armor designs for the one you wore are just weird? Well, since we're going to be fighting Shallow Bull, who's piloting the biggest brawl bro, is it correct for it? It's a pain in the ass, but it's not too difficult to fight And he's got a fishbowl helmet as well. Is it some sort of new type channeling helmet? This looks like a diving belt. Of course, you're going to have to fight off a plethora of brick gongs here while being shot at by the brawl bro. But I recommend clearing out the random appearing enemies before you actually take on the bowl. It just makes things a lot easier. They got away. Once you have cleared out the area, he's kind of he's Just keep strafing from side to side and watch out for his all range attack mode here. Um, when he does split off his little all range attack, I just start boosting forward and rushing side to side because it tends to avoid most of the attacks. And then I usually try to get close and use a beam saber a couple of times front, but he's pretty accurate with those damn weapons, so you can get your own risk. Now, Gundam Special Attack isn't too handy here because he likes to immediately use the uh, thruster dodge, double tap, and spinning out of the way, getting rid of lock. It's a pain in the ass. It's almost as bad as Big Zom was. My best advice if you're actually going to try and get him special is to try to force him to actually do the barrel roll, and then right when you get locked back on him, use your special attack. There seems to be a little bit of a lag time from between the moments you can use the dodge roll. I want all white base mechanics to stop working on the Gundam. Right, we'll take over from this point. Whoa, what's going on here? Well... Amaro's reflexes have continued to improve to the point where the Gundam's performance is lagging behind its potential. A decision is made to apply a special magnetic coating to the mobile suit. This enhancement should allow greater freedom of movement in the joints and greatly increase its response time. The arms look so tiny in the mobile suit there. All right, that's Frank again. Matter of fact, what they're adding is the... Uh... Well, that looks interesting. Hopefully this isn't glitching out on me here. Come on, you can do it. Ha, huh, that was a little weird glitch. Anyways, the magnetic coating that they're applying was actually pioneered using the RX-78 G3 prototype the unit. The colony of Mahal has been chosen to house the solar ray system, resulting in the forced evacuation of its residents by the Xeon military. Giran is petitioning the sovereign Daegwin to give his authorization for this ultimate weapon. Giran, are you familiar with how fascists fight wars? Fascists? That ideology from the Middle Ages. I'll show you how a follower of fascism conducts a real war. Don't forget that the fascists were defeated in the past. Simultaneously, General Revel, commander of the Federation forces, announces the target of Operation Star One. They mean to force their way past the Bawaku and invade the Zeon homeland itself. General Goddamn Revel. All right, with him on our side, there's no way we can lose. It's the fleet from Granada. All hands, combat status one. We'll get the Gundam and everyone else launched. Oh God, it's this level. And does anyone think that uh, the uh, castle where the zombies were at looks like Prince Lothor's castle from the original Voltron? Just me gives me those vibes for it. Anyways, welcome to what has to be the trippiest goddamn level in this game. 
And uh, it's pretty obvious when we get to that part, so uh, enjoy, I suppose. Amuro, let's God, I wish you could skip this scene. Especially when I had to go through and redo the levels again, it's, it would be really nice to be able to just skip all these cutscenes. We'll have a place to return to after this. The enemy is focusing on that Federation ship up ahead. Back them up. Roger. Gun them advance. All right, rail shooter time. Teams. Target as much as you can. Blow up everything that moves. Spare no one. Betty mobile suits can't bring this ship down. Them. Pretty well get to watch all of the uh, Solomons get their asses as well. Our ship's mobile suits were wiped out. Sucks. Requesting support. Oh no. No, 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 no. Not that noise. Well, if you can hear it over the explosions of death, that is the sound of a mobile armor. One mobile armor in particular. Enemy detachment. A white mobile suit! Run! <laughs> I love how they turn That's shit into the slightest mention of the gun dump. You're asking for it. There! But probably one thing I enjoyed a lot with the original series is that, and the one year war series to begin with, is that you felt like you were part, the, the characters felt like they were part of an army. Like it wasn't just the all powerful Gundam beam spamming the shit out of everything. There were other mobile suits that were doing shit and, and you know, pushing back the forces of uh, Zeon and all that. So it didn't just feel like it was just them. You know, Kira on goddamn Yamato and doing his shit there. Now, periodically throughout this level, you're going to catch a glimpse of just random little things you can target. Don't even bother trying to shoot them. It's a waste of time. They move way too fast, and all they are there is to basically just confuse your targeting computer as much as possible. Yeah, those unknown little units there that you can see pop up. Just a pain in the ass with this targeting computer. Because I ended up trying to cycle through most of these as quick as I can to get to the mobile suits and end up bypassing them because of this, I think they're the stupid little unknowns here. But they move too goddamn fast and they're way too far out of your battle spheres for each section to shoot at. It'd be just a waste of ammo. Now, I'm curious as to, how, as to how many mobile suits Armuro actually shot down during the course of the One Year War. I used to know how many it was, but I cannot remember whatsoever. Hell, I don't even know if there is an official count. I mean, it depends on what source to look at. If you just go by the original television series, there's one count. If you go by uh, the movies, that's a different count. But is there actually a canonical Where count, I wonder? Uh, I hate that noise. Lala, again? Who's watching? Lala. You know, just notice something. Lala's a freaking stalker. All she likes to do is watch somebody from far What's away. Oh wait, no. This sensation. Not a stalker, a voyeur. And is it just me, or do those little noises that the unknown units make, uh, who is do they sound like they're actually saying Lala? Because that's what I get out of that. Anyways, welcome to fighting the Elmith. There! Which is a complete pain in the ass. There! You're not getting away from this. It's useless! I will give uh, this game its credit where credit's due. Mobile armor fights in this game are a bitch. An absolute bitch. Whereas the Federation of Sion and Gundam vs. Zeta Gundam, they were kind of a joke. The only one that was ever really threatening was the Psycho Gundam. Now you can actually target these little bits of hers and feel free to take them out. They will actually try and take you down as quick as possible. So use the spam attack and they go down pretty quick with uh, multiple beam shots. Too slow! 
Best advice for dodging is to try and read where they're going to shoot and go the opposite direction. It's all about reflex for it. The beams make it a little easier. I can feel how these things are being controlled. Creepy. Why do things blow up in pink um, Why do you have a fishbowl on your head? Why are you fighting, Lala? Why do you care? You're cruel for trying to harm Shar, but that's crazy! Your strength has confirmed my worst fears. I must destroy you to save Shar! Yeah. At this rate... Trippiness ho! I'm afraid you come too late. Yep. Came too Welcome late? to Trippy Land. This fight is just going to be completely made up of segments of normal combat and blue stardust trippiness. Matter of fact, it, it really doesn't even seem to be useful. Why did you have to wait so long before you appeared in my life? I mean, it's kind of cool for dramatic effect, and it does take a page out of the actual series itself, but it just kind of gets annoying to break up the fight like this. I wish they just would have done one full cutscene at the end of it or at the beginning and just let you go through the mission. A detachment alone? What a shame. What? I'm pretty sure those little pods underneath the helmet are actually the pod things for the bits. And she will launch those. Um, she has an infinite supply, I believe, because I don't think I've ever seen it run out before. It's you! I can sense that. There is no family in your heart. And no homelands either. You've no one to love in your life. What difference does any of that make? Now, I tried turning down the music so it doesn't overpower the audio for the actual characters, but the problem is, is that I found you, the tuner for the audio level for that in this game is controls both the audio for the characters and the game music itself. Sure. My head! Alright, new fighter. Challenger has appeared. Fuck him up. He's a little bit tougher than he was when he was fighting him with the guy in. It's still kind of a piss easy fight. And the element doesn't even want to see the fight. The bits do most of the work. I actually recommend fighting fighting the Gelgu in close range instead of long range because it's a lot easier to avoid the attacks from the element for that way. I feel like going around the battlefield screaming your brother's name is a good way to hold up a sign that says, Kill me, please. Surprisingly, my shield was holding out pretty good. There we go, and done. Okay. Are you saying it's wrong to fight if there's nothing I want to defend? It just isn't natural. Then who are you defending? I'm fighting for the one person who saved my life. That's it? That's your reason? Yes, we all need such truths in our lives. Then it means nothing to you that we met each other? Ah! Rala, stop playing around with him. Sure. Captain! The Gundam and a red mobile suit? Caswell, you have to fall back! Ah! Ah, Captain, don't do it! But why? No, it's Artasia! Oh, this is it! Captain! Lala! Ah! Lala! Ah! People are changing. They're becoming like us. Yeah, there's a lot of truth in that, Lala. <laughs> I can see time itself. I've done something I'll never be able to forgive myself for. I've killed Lala! Why? Why did this happen? Right now, I'm not good enough to defeat the Gundam. Lala, please.
Please show me how. How can I defeat him? Question. Why would you put the mobile suit cockpit in the front of the uh, mobile armor? And had Sayla never been there and gotten in the middle of this shit, would this have ever happened? Don't know. That's a what-if scenario for another day. Till next episode, folks. Later.